Okay, hi, hi everyone. Uh, so the welcome to the today's webinar. So uh, today's webinar is about uh, deploying WSO2 API managing production grade uh, Kubernetes. So I'm Pubudu Gunatilika. I'm an associate technical lead at uh, WSO2. So I work at uh, API manager team and I'm kind of looking into the cloud technologies such as uh, Kubernetes, Istio and like those technologies. So with me today, I have uh, Andrea Pereira, uh, who is a software engineer at WSO2, and uh, she is currently working uh, in the API manager team and looking into Kubernetes uh, and uh, local stuff as well. Okay, so let's uh, look at the, uh, today's agenda for the webinar. So uh, I will look, uh, go through the introduction to Kubernetes and then I will check on why we need Kubernetes and um, then again uh, I will um, uh, go through the Kubernetes deployment architecture and um, we'll be doing uh, several demos so the one of the demo will be to deploy WSO2 API manager with analytics in Google Kubernetes engine. And we'll be doing an auto scaling in the WSO2 API manager, which is based on the production load. So we can uh, check based on the load, how we can scale WSO2 server as in real production scenario. And finally, demo is about applying warm updates or the patches uh, in a production Kubernetes environment. And uh, finally, uh, we will be discussing on the best practices for deploying WSO2 API manager in Kubernetes. So uh, I'll try to uh, generalize those uh, concerns and how you can apply to other applications as well. Okay, um, let's uh, look at uh, what is Kubernetes. Kubernetes is, uh, is an open source uh, system for managing containerized application across multiple hosts, providing basic mechanism for uh, deployment, maintenance, and scaling of applications. So when moving from uh, virtual machines to containers, then the requirements come how to uh, manage and control uh, the containers. So um, containers can go down and we need a mechanism to uh, do the managing of those containers. So the um, Google has uh, developed these uh, these uh, Kubernetes uh, um, container orchestration system. So the, they have uh, learned lessons and uh, uh, lessons coming from Borg, Omega, and finally they have uh, developed Kubernetes. So the lesson learned over three container management system over a decade has been um, uh, succeed in Kubernetes. So uh, if you go to this uh, link, you can uh, read on the research paper, which uh, explains those uh, de in those details. So uh, so let's uh, look at the other players in this uh, uh, in this uh, aspect as well. So the Docker Swarm, OpenShift, uh, Apache Mesos, uh, also DCS. TZOS is they are one of the commercialized product and uh, Pivotal Cloud, uh, Cloud Foundry, which has the Diaco runtime. Okay, now uh, let's look at why we need uh, Kubernetes. So um, there is a need for Kubernetes in today's industry. So um, one requirement is to availability and scalability so that if, that if a container crashes in a in docker your application stops working so there is a need for to auto heal and some auto scaling as well so i'm not going to detail in uh, these areas you can um, we'll be sharing the webinar um, slides after the webinar so you can go through there so the simple idea is that um, we need uh, availability and scalability can be achieved for your applications 
using Kubernetes. And other concern is networking and port mapping. So uh, you will be able to service this, uh, get the services discovered via Kubernetes. So uh, Kubernetes provides an abstraction of IP addresses, hence the wiring part is automatic. So uh, you can discover your services. And also you can have the multi-host routing. Uh, by default, um, it uses the bridge networking. So uh, limited to the same uh, Docker host you had. Now you, you can um, span uh, de your deployment across multiple hosts. So this is a simple um, uh, diagram which explains how you can expose your external or your internal uh, traffic to external. So you can use an ingress, then all the external traffic could come to the internal and finally those will be come to your bots. So um, other key requirement is about the storage. Uh, and this, in, if you take the Kubernetes storage, you can um, use uh, Kubernetes to uh, work across multiple machines and uh, share volumes across uh, multiple nodes. So you can share data between your ports in uh, which are in different nodes. For example, if you take this one, you'll be running an application where you have three pro ports running and those ports could be uh, running in uh, three separate nodes. Then uh, you can use a cluster FS or the uh, network file server to share your data. So all these can be done in Kubernetes. Another concern is that health checks and monitoring. So you can use Kubernetes probes. So there are two main probes like uh, readiness probes and uh, liveness probe. So the I will discuss in those uh, in detail when I come to the best practices session. And um, so th these criteria can be different and users can define their own criteria and determine how to do the health checks. So the next thing about monitoring, so the Kubernetes provides extensive support and seamless integration with the external log analyzers. Uh, so the, there are several log drivers and also there are um, native supports for logging and the Prometheus is one of the key leading uh, uh, logging and monitoring uh, uh, use case. So uh, Kubernetes also comes with uh, some dashboard uh, contains or return cluster health information. Uh, other concern is about the, uh, you have the orchestrations and DevOps uh, features. So um, Kubernetes the end user will interact with the REST API. You can use a kubectl or a REST API. And uh, if you, uh, you, you can interact with the YAML based declaration. So this is a sample YAML for port definition. So likewise, uh, this is very interactive and users can rely on it. So the another key aspect is uh, resource management. So the Kubernetes can schedule workloads uh, based on resource availability. So each uh, workload can define um, their resource uh, requirements and based on the re resource requirements, so uh, their workloads will get uh, scheduled. So uh, let's look at the Kubernetes uh, deployment architecture. So this is a sample um, deployment architecture where you have the kubectl client on top of, so where it interacts with the Kubernetes API server. So the Kubernetes API server uh, resides in Kubernetes master. And it's cluster with three nodes. So uh, these, uh, these uh, a similar kind of a uh, deployment. So we have in three nodes and each node has a local runtime. So when you deploy an application, uh, those um, in deployment, you can specify what are the ports available and port is a collection of containers. So those containers will be scheduled in any of those uh, nodes based on the resource um, uh, availability. 
if you go a little bit further into the this uh, uh, deployment architecture if you take the master you have the api server scheduler controller manager and etcd for those uh, controlling um, control uh, activity and if you take uh, one of the nodes or the all the nodes you have the infrastructure at the bottom in the operating system and on top of that you have the container runtime so on top of that your containers will be running and uh, apart from that you have the couplet and group proxy which interacts with the master and get the things done for the node so that's the basic idea behind this uh, deployment so um, without further delay we be going to into the demo so the andrea will be doing the demo so over to you andrea thank you for the first part of the demo will be deploying wso to api manager with antics in google kubernetes engine we're going to deploy four pods one pod will be a will be a database pod and then another pod will be for api manager and then another part for the analytics. Finally, there will be a part for the sample backend service called Hello Kubernetes, developed by Ballerina. This will be the outline for the demo. First, we're going to deploy WSO2 API Manager with analytics in GKE. For that, we need to create a Kubernetes cluster in gcloud. And we have to create a single not file server in gcloud too. After that, we're going to deploy WSO2 API Manager and Analytics. After deploying WSO2 API Manager and Analytics, we're going to deploy Nginx Ingress Controller. After that, we're going to access management controllers such as Publisher and Store. At the end, we're going to deploy our sample backend service. The second part of the demo will be auto scaling WSO2 API Manager based on the production load. And the third part of the demo will be applying rolling updates on WSO2 API Manager with zero downtime. OK, I have already deployed all the, I have already installed all the prerequisites. You have to install uh, gcloud SDK and kubectl for command line interface and git to clone the repo. And then we you should have a uh, gcloud project in order to use wso2 kubernetes resources we need to have an wso2 subscri subscription if not we can sign up for wso2 free trial subscription let's go and create a gcloud let's go and create a cluster in gcloud Go to Kubernetes engine and then click on clusters. Click on create cluster. Give a unique name for the cluster. And soon. Number of nodes will be three. Machine type will be four V CPUs. Click on additional features. Go to security section and click enable basic authentication. And create the cluster. All the resources from for the demo will be in this repo. I'm going to follow this step for the demo. While the cluster is creating, I'll show how to dip, how to create a uh, single not file server in gcloud. Go to gcloud marketplace. Click Explore Marketplace.
and search for single file observer. Select your project. Give a unique name for the deployment. And then give the same zone which we used earlier. And then click deploy. I have already deployed the NFS. Let's go and check it. Go to computer engine. Under that, go to VM instance. Let's SH it to it. We need to have a single file node server to persist data and to share them all over the nodes. Okay, now let's create a system group name WSO2 with group ID 802. Copy this command from it. I have already created this. And after that, let's create a Linux system user account name WSO2 carbon with user ID. 802 and add the WSO2 carbon user to the group WSO2. I have already done that too. And let's create unique directories for directories for API manager and database. And then do the same thing for the database. Let's grant ownership to WSO2 carbon and WSO2 group for the APM directory. Let's grant read, write, execute permission to the WSO2 user for the previously created directories. That's it on NFS server. Just let's exit from this. Now let's go and have a look on the cluster. It's already created. Let's connect. Copy this command and paste it on your terminal. Let's update the APM persistent volume YAML and database persistent volume YAML with the IP address of the server and the path for, of, for the directories, which we created earlier. Here, let's go to gcloud to check the server.
copy this internal IP address. I have already done it and then update the path. Let's do the same thing for, to the database. I have already done that too. I'm going to deploy all the Kubernetes artifacts for the WS2 API manager by executing deploy SH script. You have to give the WSO2 username and the password, and then cluster admin password as para, uh, as arguments. I have already exported the username and the password. Go to the gcloud console to check the trust admin password. Click on show credential. Copy the password. Okay. Okay, so uh, when uh, deploying, actually, we are giving the username and password of the WSO2 account because uh, our Docker images are running in uh, uh, docker.wso.com, which is a private registry. Uh, which we host uh, WSO2 images. So that's why the username and password are there. So when deploying, we are actually creating a separate namespace called WSO2. So all the artifacts will be get deployed in this uh, WSO2 namespace. And uh, we'll be creating uh, several uh, service accounts and uh, several secrets, folders uh, and role binding. Those are for some of the um, API access related uh, artifacts. So uh, for clustering, in some cases we need uh, clustering. So we are not going to use clustering, but in uh, because we have a generic uh, Docker image, so that's why we have a if someone wants uh, clustering that, that they can go with clustering as well. So we are deploying several config maps. The config map contains the configuration files. Uh, which is a uh, yeah, to the carbon server or the api manager server uh, those are getting deployed as config maps um, and then those are attached to the container when starting up and we'll be uh, deploying several persistent volumes so we need uh, two persistent volumes one for the database and one for the api manager so in persistent volumes uh, we need to uh, Persist the deployment server location of the API manager and to share with other uh, servers as well. So if you are running multiple nodes, you may have to share uh, those uh, artifacts with other nodes as well. So uh, then uh, we'll be having uh, persistent claims where you define the persistent storage uh, uh, requirement. And uh, we are deploying analytics for analytics uh, deployment and the service and for API manager we'll be deploying uh, persistent volume claim deployment and the service and finally we have deployed the ingresses which to expose uh, 
API manager and the uh, API manager gateway URS. So, okay. okay, now let's go and deploy Nginx Ingress. Give the cluster password. Okay, let's check the status of the pod. All the pods are in, in running state. Let's check on the indices. We are waiting for the IP addresses. So uh, we have uh, deployed Nginx Ingress controller. So it takes some time to deploy. So uh, once it is available, uh, those IP addresses will be there. So it's there. OK. Let's add this host and as an inventory in etc host file. Let's copy this address. Now let's go and deploy a sample backend service. Before that, let's access and see whether we can go for the management console. Choose admin admin as credentials. As you can see, we can successfully access to the management consoles. Now let's go and deploy a backend service. Okay, we have successfully created the deployment of the service. And then we have successfully created the service also. Let's check the status. Okay, this is our backend service. It's in the running state. 
objective service. This is our backend service, which is running on 9090. Now let's create an API. We're going to use REST API to create an API. First, we're going to obtain the consumer secret and the key, and then we're going to encode it. And then after that, we're going to create a new API with the image. Let's check. We have successfully created an API. Now let's go and create an application for that API. First, we're going to obtain the consumer key and the secret, and, we, and then we're going to encode it. After that, we're going to generate the access tokens. Finally, we're going to create the application and then get the keys, generate the key, keys for the application. Let's check it. We have successfully created an application with one subscription. Now we're going to invoke an API. To invoke an API, we're going to get a token. Even here, we're going to obtain the consumer key and the secret, and then we're going to encode it. And now we are generating the access tokens to, in to invoke an API. OK, we got the token. Now let's go and look at the token here. Okay, we have successfully invoked an API. Okay, the first part is done. First, we deploy the WSO to API manager with analytics, and then we deploy Nginx ingress, and then we and then we create a API and application, and then we invoke an API. So the second part of the demo will be. Auto scaling WSO to API manager based on the production load. How does this work is there is an inbuilt HPA controller in Kubernetes. It will monitor all the HPA objects and check continuously our predefined metrics and target CPU utilization. If the target exceeds, it will increase the number of replicas to maintain an average CPU utilization across all the pods. Default, we have one pod, and after the target CPU utilization exceeds, it will scale up to another pod. This is the scale pod. 
Now let's go and create a horizontal pod auto scaler that maintains between one to two replicas of the pod. For the demo purpose, I'm going to use 5% as target CPU utilization. While it's creating, I'm using Hello Client script to send 70 requests per minute to achieve the CPU load. This will be the Hello Client script. Let's check the stages of the HPA. We are waiting until we exceed the target CPU utilization. Still, it's 2%. It should exceed 5%. Min pods will be one, and then the maximum pods will be two. Already we have one replica set. If we exceed the target uh, CPU utilization, it should be two replica set. Still, we have not exceed the target. So, in the HPA, this is one way of uh, having uh, based on the CPU level. So, you can customize it and do uh, uh, different calculations and have a different HPA. Okay, or we have already exceeded the target. Let's check the replica set. Okay, the number of replica set has been changed to two. Only one in, in ready state. Let's go and check the part. As you can see, there are two parts now. One part is already running, and this is not in the ready state yet. This is the script. Still, it's not in the ready state. Let's check the replica set again. Still only one body is in the ready state.
ओके लेट्स चेक अगेन तो दो बात करना ओके टू पॉइंट्स ऑफ एंड रानी ओके लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ द डिमो So if you look at the user story here, like uh, we auto scale the uh, API manager server based on production load. So uh, if the, we can define our policy and uh, we can define the replicas what we need and what are the percentages uh, we need threshold value. So based on that, uh, uh, those will get app time. So the it will auto scale. Up and it will auto scale down, so both will happen with the time constraint. The third part of the demo will be applying rolling updates on WS2 API manager with zero downtime. In this part of the demo, I'm going to show how to update WS2 API manager with zero downtime. Let's check the status of the part again. We have already two parts. Let's describe it and see. The image will be W3 W3 AM with 2.60. Let's check the ML of it. This is the deployment ML we used earlier with W3 API Manager 2.60. This is the image tag. Um, this will be the ML we're going to use now. With the image tag, WS3 aim latest with latest update, and then the type will be rolling update. The only difference will be the image name. Let's redeploy our deployment. Okay, let's check the status of the part. Okay, one part is contained terminating and one part another part is contained rising. Let's check the replica set. Okay, this is the old version replica set. And this is the latest version replica set. 
as you can see there will be one part for wso to api manager 2.60 another part with tag with latest the script is still running without any failures as you can see no any failures when invoking an api at least there will be one for running let's check again Slowly, it delays the parts of the old replica set and create parts on the new replica set. This is the old replica set, and this is the latest uh, replica set with latest update. Till the script is running without any failures. Let's check the status of the pod. Old version pod is terminating, and then the new version pod is still not in the ready state. And this part is also in the new version. As you can see, the image tag will be latest. It's surface again. Okay. Zero pods on old replica set, and then two pods on the new replica set, and one is in ready state. So uh, this is a uh, one way of uh, uh, getting a zero downtime uh, uh, and do a rollout. So what we explain is about how to roll in update uh, uh, with zero downtime. So uh, with the, keeping the zero downtime, you can do a kind of deployment as well. You can uh, deploy the warm update at uh, another deployment and uh, incrementally uh, push uh, traffic to uh, that uh, newly created deployment. So likewise, you can do the incremental uh, traffic routing as well. Okay. Let's check the status of the pod. Okay. All the pods are running now. As we have deployed analytics, let's have a look on analytics. Give admin admin as signing credentials.
So the, you can see uh, an anticipated graph. So uh, you can check on this. So also you can see those uh, details as well. So uh, that's about the analysis. And I think we can move on to the uh, next section of the slide. Okay. As you can see, there's no any failures in the script. Over to you, Kutubu. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Andrew. So, uh, so let's uh, look at the best practices of uh, So the, let's look at the best practices of for deploying WSF API manager in, uh, and Kubernetes. So I will go through this in a, a more generic way. So uh, one is the reduced non-reproducible local storage. So we have to make sure we provide uh, less few number of local storage so that the containers can spin up quickly and uh, because the containers are inferred. And uh, another one is avoid multiple context uh, configuration files. So, um, so it is uh, you can use configuration files in config maps. Then you have to reduce the config maps which you use in a container because it will uh, slow the build up and make complexity. So in WSO, WSO also we are. Uh, trying to reduce uh, all the configuration files and the future releases will be having a single file to configure every uh, thing. Uh, so that's the way to go ahead. Uh, and then another one is a uh, user non root user inside the container. So always use an non root uh, user, otherwise, it will allow you to, uh, in, in, it will open the host to. Uh, open access to the host as a tool use as well. And uh, you can use the readiness and line of So the readiness is about uh, whether the app is running to start serving traffic. And the liveness is about uh, whether the app is still running. So these are very vital factors when you are deploying application in Kubernetes. So uh, you can use those as well. And one of the other important factor is to use uh, set the resource limits and weakness for the containers. For example, your application uh, may require 2 GB of memory to run minimum. But uh, if you don't define this, and uh, and uh, if you don't define this, uh, if, uh, if the node is capable of, the node have, uh, the node has a 100 GB of, uh, 100 MP of memory, then this your application will try to run on that. So eventually it will get there. So you have to make sure you define those resource limits uh, correctly and make sure your application has those uh, uh, resource allocations. So uh, always use the uh, your logs to the STD out and reduce the flutter to login. So you can use centralized uh, login to um, collect your logs as well. And uh, you have to target smaller container image sizes as always. So this will uh, less pulling to do and uh, less uh, time to start up. So uh, in WSO also, we have uh, take a massive part um, of effect to reduce the container image sizes. And uh, going forward, uh, we'll be utilizing more and more. And um, so that's about the best practices. So if you want to try out this in the API manager and the deploy API managing Kubernetes, so you can use the uh, in samples API repo, repo. If you go to this link, uh, you can follow the instructions uh, what uh, Andrea followed. So uh, in sample API, uh, you have a specifically those script uh, to deploy APIs, uh, get tokens, and access uh, 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 invoke the API. So those uh, scripts are there. And in this one, Kubernetes API is the official or the Kubernetes uh, uh, 
artifacts we release from WSO2 which is related to API manager so you can find those artifacts as well so the key difference is that in that samples repo you have some modified version of it with some uh, scripts in it so uh, in the future also we will be uh, releasing those artifacts um, in kubernetes api for the uh, future releases as well okay then um, let's uh, move on to the questions and answers section so we have got uh, pretty much a lot of questions so i'll try to cover everything um, so the uh, one question is whether what is the version we have used so we have used api manager 260 which is the latest release one so um, you can deploy and try that as well and uh, we we have uh, if you go to kubernetes api and repo in this one you have those artifacts which you have for api manager started from 210 to 220 uh, 250 like that so those are there and the one other question is where do we use uh, persistent storages so uh, if you take api manager or any AWS uh, server you have a deployment server location that's where you need uh, persistent storage so in this api manager use case we, are, we use a uh, uh, persistent storages for uh, deployment server location and we use another one for the database as well so that's a separate thing and uh, next question is about um, uh, is it possible to deploy other products from WSO2 on production data? Kubernetes uh, EI. So uh, we have those EI, IES, and stream processor Kubernetes artifacts as well. So if we go to Kubernetes EI repo, like the Kubernetes APM, you have a Kubernetes EI, IES, those, uh, you can find those artifacts as well. So uh, what is the next question is about what is the minimum virtual CPU requirements for Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster for API manager? So uh, so uh, we have not uh, you um, do any um, modification to these. Uh, these are the ones we have uh, API manager servers we were running from past uh, as well. So uh, uh, so the you will need minimum uh, two virtual um, virtual CPUs and uh, two GB of memory uh, memory in minimum. But uh, there is ongoing effort to reduce that, and we will be doing some uh, performance testing. And those uh, stats will be available soon in uh, probably in uh, next two three weeks. So uh, we are trying to uh, do some. Uh, improvements over there as well and the next question is about uh, um, so what is the publisher store and the gateway so uh, the question is about um, in this uh, demo we have deployed the pattern one it is a, a deploying single all-in-one where you have the publisher store and the gateway key manager traffic manager all things are in single uh, server uh, and analytics is separate one uh, so the next question is what are the additional steps uh, for clustering when uh, multiple api nodes are running so actually um, we have a uh, discouraged clustering so we only ask users to enable clustering when they required uh, uh, immediate token revocation and uh, uh, backend service uh, throttling. Otherwise, uh, we don't ask the customers to go with the uh, clustering. So, if you want to enable clustering, we have clustering facility for Kubernetes um, as well. We have a written uh, custom uh, membership schema for Kubernetes. So, uh, if you go to Kubernetes common report, those details are available. So. Uh, we have only exposed a publisher and store uh, URLs only. If you want to expose a carbon console as well, you can do using a ingress, uh, adding an ingress uh, uh, resource as well. So um, 
and uh, that can be done as well. Uh, so the next question is about the pattern too. So the pattern is two is about some of uh, we have a uh, um, uh, we have a uh, profiles in the pattern too. So um, we have a uh, we have a all in one in pattern one and in pattern two we have uh, se separate gateway nodes, uh, separate key manager nodes. I think uh, publisher store traffic managers are all in one. So the likewise, um, you can um, distribute those uh, profiles and based on your requirement, you can um, check uh, what are the, uh, how, you, how do you want to uh, run your deployment. So if you need more traffic on gateway side, you can uh, have run gateway separately and scale up gateways uh, uh, separately. For publisher and store, if you don't require much of the traffic, and you can keep uh, can run only two nodes as well. So the next question is with the, how we do the uh, API creation. So we use the REST API in this and uh, deploy and create those APIs. So uh, that's one way. Other ways uh, you can use the publisher, uh, uh, publisher and create the API as well. So uh, these automation scripts which we use are available in the Kubernetes uh, demo, uh, the sample APM repo that is available over there as well. Uh, so as I mentioned about in the production environment based on your requirement, you can go with uh, uh, all in one, two nodes for any HA or based on uh, if you have a high traffic, you can go to a fully distributed setup as well. So, um, so uh, when deploying, uh, we actually deployed API manager and analytics in uh, two, two different ports actually. So they, those are running different, uh, uh, it could be running on a single node or it could schedule on different nodes as well. Okay, so the if you want the Docker files, those uh, Docker files will be available in uh, if you go to Docker uh, API repo under WSO2 uh, user or the organization, you can find those uh, uh, Docker files as well. So. Um, So uh, that's about, I think, uh, other question is about uh, uh, what is the Kubernetes version. So this actually works uh, in uh, uh, later releases as well. So you can try out. So uh, that's about from the question. I think uh, we uh, discussed and answered most of the questions here. So if you have more questions, uh, you can uh, directly um, send an email to me or the uh, Andrea or the WSO2 team so we can help them, uh, help you to um, reply uh, and get them, get the things uh, sorted out. So uh, that's about it from us. So uh, thank you very much for joining to, for the today's webinar. Okay, thank you very much.